Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Wyatt and today I'll be teaching you how to script a typing bubble on Roblox. Okay, so before I show you how to make this script, I just want to show you how it works. So all we have to do is go into the game. Uh, and as you'll see, as soon as we start typing in chat, the bubble will come up above our head. And when we press enter, it'll go away. Okay, so now that you know what the script does, I actually want to show you how to make it. So the first thing we're going to do before we start scripting this, we have to create our typing bubble. Um, and all this is going to be is a billboard GUI under server storage named typing bubble. And then we're going to have an image label underneath of that. Um, and you could create these yourself if you'd like, or you could use the model in the description of this video. But just set these up and we'll use them a little bit later. Okay, so now that you created your typing bubble, what we want to do is create a new script under starter GUI. Um, and I'm just going to name this script typing bubble, but you can name it whatever you'd like. And the first line that we want to put inside of the script is we want to create a variable for our local player. So all we're going to do is say local player equals game.players.local player, and that'll give us our local player. Um, and after this, what I want to do is get a reference to our user input service. Um, and the reason we're going to use the user input service for this is because we have a method under there that we use to get to see whenever a player starts chatting or if they stop chatting. Um, that'll help us know when to show the typing bubble or when to remove it. So all we're going to do is say local user input service equals game colon get service user input service. Okay, so after you set up these variables, what we want to do is get whenever the player begins chatting. Now, unfortunately, Roblox doesn't give us an easy way built into their you know, services and APIs to do this. Um, so what we have to do is come up with kind of like a little makeshift solution. Um, the best way I found to do this is get whenever this text box right here is focused. So whenever the player presses slash or if they click in here, it's going to fire the focused event of user input service for this text box. So that's really you know, an easy way to get to see whenever the player starts chatting. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to hop back to our script and we're going to say user input service and then we're going to hook into the text box focused event. So whenever a text box is focused, any text box, we want to connect that to a function. Um, and inside of this function, I want to grab the text box. So whenever they click on a text box or open it in some way, we get the text box. Um, and inside of here, because this is any text box, we need to see before we you know, show our typing bubble, we need to see if the text box that got focused is our little chat bar. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to say if text box dot name is equal to chat bar, then we can show our typing bubble. So now what we need to do after we have the code that we'll get whenever the player starts chatting, we have to get the code that will hook into an event whenever the player stops chatting. Now the way we do this is also a little bit different than you'd expect, um, but all we're going to do is hook into another method of user input service. So we'll say user input service dot text box focus release. So whenever they stop focusing on a text box, I'm going to connect that to a function just as we did up top. And I'm going to grab the text box. Um, and all I want to do just as we did up top, we just want to see if the text box that they stop focusing on or they stop typing on is equal to our chat bar. And if it is equal to our chat bar, then I want to remove our typing bubble. So we'll say if text box dot name is equal to chat bar, then what we'll do is we'll remove our typing bubble. So that's pretty much all we have to do for this local script. It's pretty simple. Um, we're going to have a few more lines we're going to add later on. But now what I want to do is I want to set up the code that's going to toggle our typing bubble. So the code that's going to say on the server side if we want to make our you know, typing bubble visible or invisible and actually make it visible or invisible. Um, and now the way we do this, if you're not familiar, is we use remote events to send data from the client to the server. So all I'm going to do is create a new remote event under replicated storage. Um, and I'm just going to name this remote event toggle typing bubble, but you can name it whatever you'd like as long as you modify it in the scripts. Um, so just put that under there. And now what I want to do is create a script under server script service. Um, and this script is just going to be what hooks into this event right here, it hooks into whenever we fire that event. So now that we have the script created, I'm just going to name it typing bubble, but you can name it wherever you'd like. Um, and the first line that we want to put inside of the script is we want to get whenever a player joins the game. Um, and now I know you're probably thinking, why, why would we need to do that? There's no purpose. Um, and the reason we're going to you know, get when a player joins the game is because whenever a player joins and whenever they reset or their character is added, we need to clone our typing bubble GUI under their head. We need to put it there just so that it's there and we can you know, manipulate it and access it later on. So all I want to do is get whenever a player joins the game. So we're going to say game.players and we're going to hook into the player added event. So whenever a player is added to our game, 
I want to connect that to a function and grab our player. So whenever a player joins, we get exactly who that player is. Um, and inside of here, I want to get whenever their character is added. So if they reset or something, we still, you know, create the typing bubble underneath their character. So we'll say player dot character added, and I'm just going to connect that up to a function. Uh, and then inside of here, all I want to do is grab the player's character, just like we did with the player up top. Okay, so now that we're getting whenever our player resets or when their character is added, I want to take a break from coding for a second and I just want to move this typing bubble to underneath of our typing bubble script. Um, and the only reason I want to do this is because right now we're going to clone this typing bubble GUI and put it underneath of the player's head. And I think it's just easier to reference and easier to access if it's closer to our script. So just move that under the script and then we're going to head back into the script. Um, and now we can actually make a duplicate of it and now put it under the player's head. So all I'm going to do, I'll create a variable for a duplicate. I'll say local typing bubble equals script.typingBubble. Um, and I'm going to call the clone method of typing bubble. So we're going to make a duplicate of it. We're going to copy it. Um, and all I want to do is I want to set the parent of this copy to the player's head. So we'll say typing bubble dot parent equals character dot head. And that'll move it under the player's head so that we can, you know, access it and reference it super easily later on. Okay, so at this point in the script, we pretty much have all of our setup done. Now we're ready to actually do the code that's going to show or unshow our typing bubble. Um, so all I want to do is, as you'll see, we have a remote event that we created earlier. I want to get whenever this remote event is fired, um, and then we just want to toggle the visibility of our typing bubble. So we'll say game.replicatedStorage dot toggle typing bubble, which is our remote event. Um, and now I want to hook into the on server event event of this remote event. So whenever it's fired from our local script, whenever we write the code in here to fire it, uh, all I want to do is connect that to a function. And inside of this function, I want to grab the player. So whichever player started typing or stopped typing. Um, and I also want to get the toggle value. So if we should show the bubble or if we should remove it or get rid of it. Um, so all we're going to do after we have those two set up, all we want to do in here is we have one line. Um, and all this is going to do is set the visibility of our typing bubble. We're going to set the enabled property to whatever toggle is equal to. So if toggle is equal to true, we want to set the visibility of typing bubble to true. If it's equal to false, then we want to set the visibility of our typing bubble GUI to false. Um, and the way we're going to do this, we just have to grab a reference to our typing bubble. So we'll say player.character dot head dot typing bubble which gives us a reference to the typing bubble that we created up here uh, now all we want to do is set the enabled property of this so character dot head dot typing bubble dot enabled equals toggle so if toggle is true it'll enable it and if toggle is false it'll disable it so that's all we have to do for our server script now we can head right on over to our local script um, and all we have to do now is fire our remote event so right in here where we say show typing bubble, I want to fire it and I want to set toggle equal to true. So we'll say game.replicatedStorage.toggleTypingBubble, our remote event, colon fire server. So we'll fire it up to our server script. Uh, and all I want to pass in, the player automatically gets passed in. I'll just say true because I want the bubble to be visible. Uh, now all I'm going to do after this, I'm just going to copy line 7 or copy the line that we just wrote, throw it underneath the line 13, and then I'm just going to set true to false. Um, and that's actually all we have to do for the script. We can go into the game real quick to test it out. Uh, and as you'll see, as soon as we start typing in chat, this little bubble comes up above our head. And whenever we stop typing, it'll go away. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned something new today about scripting on Roblox. As always, I'll have the paste and link with the code and the Roblox model link with all the assets shown in this video in the description. And I'll see you guys later.